Welcome to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast, your guide to future tech trends and innovation in a language you understand. Now, over to your host, Neil Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. I hope you've all had an amazing weekend. You have? Good. Now, because you're all refreshed and ready for another week, I wanted to talk about a serious but important topic and how technology is actually helping to save lives. Now, concussions, as I'm sure you're all aware of, is a temporary injury to the brain that is caused by a bump, a blow or sudden jolt to the head. And although it only usually lasts for up to a few days, or in some cases weeks, it sometimes needs emergency treatment. And some people can have much longer lasting problems if it's not treated. But did you know that 2.5 million young people suffer a concussion in the US alone each year? And have you ever thought about the risks of not actually treating that properly? Well, Dr. Pia Saucer, she's the founder and CEO of Crash Course by TeachAids, which essentially is an educational software that teaches young athletes about concussions. And they also currently work with Stanford University and Pop Warner. She has fantastic expertise on the persistent health problems that are currently plaguing the world. But most importantly, the technology that can be used to address these problems. All the work that she's doing is exactly what this show is all about. So buckle up and hold on tight so I can beam your ears all the way to California so we can speak with her about the fantastic work that she's doing with Teach Aids and Crash Course. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thank you so much for having me on here. Uh, my name is Pia Sorkar. This is my seventh year teaching at Stanford University's Graduate School of Education. It was in 2009 that I founded the nonprofit called Teach Aids to address numerous persistent problems in providing health education globally. Uh, we have more than 250 partners around the world, and all our interactive education software is distributed for free globally. Our first initiative was in HIV prevention education, which was instituted in 82 countries around the world, uh, mostly throughout Asia and Africa. And most recently, we've expanded our efforts into another topic area, which is concussion education. And this new initiative is called Crash Course. And Crash Course <clears throat> is the reason I invited you on today. It's incredibly exciting what you're doing there. And I think we should talk about the problem that you're solving before we actually talk about Crash Course. So can you just set the scene and tell me a little bit more about how over 2.5 million young people are suffering from concussion in the US alone and the risks of not treating it properly too? Absolutely. I'd be happy to do that. So there are about 38 million children who participate in sports each year here. Uh, the Center for Disease Control indicates that there are somewhere between 1.6 and 3.8 million sports-related concussions among young people every year. Uh, other studies show that one in five high school kids, for instance, experience sports-related concussions. The range that you find in the number of concussions experienced very significantly. And it's because experts say that it's drastically underestimated because of underreporting. Uh, with proper care, most concussions can heal within a couple of days. But the overwhelming majority of students and parents and coaches are unaware of the latest science about prevention and treatment of concussions. And an even greater challenge is that if it's not properly treated when it initially occurs, a concussion may have lasting effects um, which could range from physical, emotional, and cognitive effects. Uh, the majority of studies show that these kids don't report and they go back into the game. In fact, one in three are known to go back into the same game. And going back into the game after experiencing a concussion can be extremely dangerous. So the athlete is three to five times more likely to get another injury, which could be another concussion. Um, or because of the balance and vision uh, related issues and their senses are off, they could get hurt um, in another way uh, with an injury to another part of their body. And on this Daily Tech podcast, I love exploring how companies are using technology, but to solve real problems. So you could tell me a little bit more about how Crash Course is changing the way people actually understand concussions and also providing students, parents and coaches with the latest medical knowledge on the prevention and treatment of concussions too. 
Absolutely. As we spoke to experts in the field, it became apparent that there was a great need for more compelling education for youth. Research demonstrated that the way most concussion education was communicated was simply not getting through to kids. It was mostly through PDFs and posters and videos of talking heads. So to address the problem, we did two things. The first was that we engaged with world-class medical experts and advisors to ensure that the latest science was being communicated. Much of the education that was out there was outdated. Uh, the second thing we did was that we worked extensively with young people to develop education that truly resonated with them. They didn't want information or education that felt like a regular classroom. They wanted an interactive experience. So with Crash Course, it begins with a scene where the learner is in the middle of an intense football game. The kid gets concussed and has to make a decision on whether to stay in the game or to take a knee. The interactive video experience and branches into a choose your own adventure type plot line. And to enhance the learning experience, our research team added a virtual reality component um, version, which allowed the kids to be totally immersed in that learning experience. So what are the four parts of Crash Course, just for people listening that have not heard of you guys or, or what Crash Course entails? I'm excited to share that with you. So the first is a short interactive film which shares the latest medical knowledge about concussions and prevention and treatment. And then there's a symptom simulator which helps youth and parents recognize concussions, signs and symptoms and helps them empathize with those who have experienced similar injuries and share their own personal experiences. The third element is a brain fly through which takes youth and parents inside a 3D representation of a real human brain to help them better understand its complexity and its vulnerability. Uh, and lastly, we've got training secrets of sports heroes, which feature high profile athletes sharing exclusive perspectives and insights from their personal experiences. And of course, behind Crash Course, like you mentioned a few moments ago, there is a lot of research that's gone into this. So I've got to ask, I mean, what did you learn after two years of research, six months of production, and also thousands of hours of user testing? The research behind Crash Course has been fascinating. We learned that although the kids loved the high profile elite pro athletes, that for a topic as sensitive and stigmatized as concussions, young people related most to those who had been in their shoes most recently. So that is more like a near peer. We were fortunate to have pre-med student and All-American running back Bryce Love starring in the Crash Course production. We launched our initial product a few months ago and the reception has been, it's been humbling. The kids love the interactive experience and national sports organizations are asking us almost on a daily basis of how they can get involved to help youth across the country. Uh, respected organizations like Pop Warner, American Youth Football have instituted crash course across their youth and coaching staff. And we're now working with USA Football and the U.S. Olympic Committee to develop multi-sport athlete and coaching education with certifications. And I also read you doing some incredibly exciting work with VR, too. So, I mean, just to help people listening visualize how your educational software is teaching your athletes about concussions at places such as Stanford University and Pop Warner. And how are you doing that with VR headsets? Sure. Our education is available online for free as a web version, which is accessible to everyone. And the VR version of Crash Course will launch in about a month. Um, we assume most users will, like Pop Warner, will be using or accessing the web version. But for those who have access to the headsets, the VR version will offer a truly immersive and interactive experience. Uh, the VR version will be rolled out into public high schools in Arkansas in the spring to start. So can you also offer any insights into the types of persistent health problems that are plaguing the world and also how technology can be used to address them, in your opinion? No, technology has been useful to mitigate a number of health challenges. For Teach Aids, our organization, um, we focus on educating on topics with high stigma for which technology has been especially useful. So let me give you a few examples of that. Um, the first is around acceptance. Um, I'm gonna go back to some of the, the HIV work that we did initially because it was especially helpful there. Sure. Um, many teachers around the world and educators refused to teach about this particular topic because they were so uncomfortable around it or they felt like they didn't know enough about it. And so utilizing technology, we were able to 
uh, put everything that the young people needed to learn about within the technology and the teachers weren't needed or they weren't required or for a lot of them that wanted to give this education in the classroom, they could simply hit play and the kids could learn about it. Um, another issue has been around accuracy. So much of the education, whether you're talking about HIV or you're talking about concussions or really most health topics, um, it's difficult to get complete education together in an accurate and consistent way. But with the use of technology, we can use virtual teachers uh, to be able to ensure that every group in every instance is receiving the same education every time. There are other instances where learners feel uncomfortable learning about particular topics from actual human beings. And so the use of technology has been particularly helpful in those instances to create a virtual private learning environment and make the learners feel more comfortable. And lastly, trust has been an incredibly important issue when it comes to sensitive health topics. And learners only trust information as much as they trust the provider. Uh, the research has shown that software is being, being viewed as a, an objective and unbiased um, source of information for learners. But outside of that, we've been able to take people that these young uh, learners want to learn from and create digital versions of their avatars and be able to bring it to them uh, so that they can learn in more uh, interactive and advanced ways. Excellent. And just to go back to VR, you said a few moments ago that Arkansas was the first state to commit statewide to virtual reality concussion education program. And you kind of, I think you said that it was it was in the next month or two, but how is that going? And are you getting any interest from other states too? Yeah, it's been really exciting. So Arkansas was the first state to commit to incorporating VR um, into their public school system, and they'll be rolling it out this coming spring. So it'll be interesting to see how the other states react to this and hopefully follow their lead as well. And what's next for Crash Course? Is it all about expansion for you right now? It's been an exciting ride. Uh, we're going from developing the Crash Course football version to developing multi-sport athlete education now. There's been an, a tremendous interest in coaching education using the same model. So we'll be extending our product line to include both additional athlete education as well as coaching education with certifications. And this year, we're also excited to delve into producing the brain fly through experience as well as the symptom simulator. Fantastic. Well, there's going to be a lot of people listening that are really interested in what you're doing here. So could you test that you remind them of where they can find you guys online and also maybe even reach out to a member of your team if they've got any additional questions? Sure. So the, all of our latest information can be found on our website, which is at teachaids.org. And we can also be reached at info at teachaids.org. Well, I'll add those links to the blog post that accompanies this podcast. And I think I've got to say that solutions such as Crash Course are why I record this daily tech podcast. I mean, we're in February now, but the year always starts with CES in Las Vegas. And it's all these different solutions to problems that don't even exist yet, such as smart diapers, I think I saw there, and so many other crazy solutions. But this is solving real problems and ultimately saving lives. It's a fantastic work that you're doing. So I'd love to stay in touch with you and get you back on when that uh, VR is rolled out across Arkansas and see how you're getting on there. But best to look for the future. And thanks for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. I love this one. And I loved how they're using Crash Course to change the way people actually understand concussions. And how after two years of research, six months of production and thousands of hours of user testing, Crash Course are now actually able to use technology to provide students, parents and coaches with the latest medical knowledge on the prevention and also, of course, the treatment of concussions. And the people behind it, Teach Aids, they're an award-winning social venture that creates breakthrough technology to solve persistent problems in health education all over the world. Now, I don't know about you listening, but that is so much more exciting and appealing to me than the CES show in Vegas, which I have knocked a little bit this year. I don't seem to have a gripe with that. But the statewide virtual reality concussion education program is something that I'm particularly excited about. And that's something I'm going to be monitoring very closely and I hope to get her back on the show and find out how that's going. Because ultimately, it's an exciting, useful and valuable way of leveraging technology. And it doesn't get any better than that. But over to you. Enough of my impassioned rants about technology making a difference. What are your thoughts? What are your insights? What are your expertise and your observations? 
email me directly, techblogwriter at outlook.com. And you can also get me on Twitter and Instagram, just at Neil C. Hughes. And if you've enjoyed today's episode, I know every podcast host asks this question, but if you could leave a rating or review, it really does help us battle against those pesky algorithms who ultimately decide if a new listener will find this show or not. But enough preaching for me. (laughs) It's time for me to rest the old vocal cords so I can get another podcast out to you tomorrow. So a big thank you for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thanks for listening to the Tech Blog Writer Podcast. Until next time, remember, technology is best when it brings people together.